Truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, he also shall live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of heaven. Not as the fathers ate and died, he who eats this bread shall live forever. It says these things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a difficult statement. Who can listen to it? In other words, they correctly understood, Jesus, what are you talking about? You're freaking everybody out. Verse 61, But Jesus, conscious that his disciples grumbled at this, said, Does this cause you to stumble? What then if you should behold the Son of Man ascending where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he was saying, and here he is, he, he's wrapping up this whole section. And he says, For this reason I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted him from the Father. That's amazing. That's astounding. It is. I mean, it's like that, that whole entirety of John 6 is, wow. Yeah. You know, here you've got throngs of people coming to Jesus. But what you saw is when they came to him, he saw they were going to do exactly what we would think. You know, oh, they're going to make me king. Oh, good. Isn't that what you want, Jesus? No. No. Mm-mm. Goes away. They come back again, and he just lays it on them hard. And they can't believe. They can't do the one thing he said. And then he wraps up that section saying, this is why I told you. No one comes to me. And then I just I got to finish that section because actually I've heard somebody else say here, talking about Peter's statement here, that it was a a positive, sweet thing. I think, personally, this is one of those foot-in-the-mouth statements of Peter's where Jesus corrects him. And it says, As a result of this, many of his disciples withdrew and were not walking with him anymore. Jesus said, therefore, to the twelve, so here's who he has left, and he says, You don't want to go away also, do you? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. And Jesus answered them and said, Did I not myself choose you, the twelve, and yet one of you is the devil? It says he's talking about Jesus Iscariot. Now, I've heard people talk about Peter there. And and you can hear Peter's heart. Oh, Lord. But in the whole context, everybody just left. And Jesus is saying, It's only because my Father gave them to me. That's who comes to me. And then wraps it up saying that the Spirit is the one who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. And then he immediately said, he turns to the disciples and says, Do you want to leave too? Just like all those people just left, you want to leave too? Oh, no, Lord. We know. He says, Did I myself not choose you? Did you not get what just happened? Don't take credit. Exactly. Do not take credit. So I was like, wow. And so I was just amazing that he would jump there to John 6. That he would go to John 6 in the context of talking about a man's free will and choice is is astounding. But this is a concept that Jesus picks up several times in his prayer in chapter 17 of the book of John. His high priestly prayer. These words spoke Jesus, and he lifted up his eyes to heaven. He said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify thee, as you have given him power over all flesh, that he may give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Hmm. This is the way Jesus always understood the relationship. Who are those that believe? Who are those that have eternal life? Who were the ones he prayed for? Those that the Father gave him, and the Father gave him power over all flesh to give eternal life to as many as God gave him. So I'm sorry, but John is quite predestinary and quite consistent in it, so I certainly uh, am surprised, as you are, that he appealed to John 6. I was, I was. In fact, I think in a little bit, he goes to John 17. Again, I was surprised him going there, so we'll discuss that when we get there.